Hi guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. For many people seeking a pet boa constrictor, one important consideration is they have a boa that they can take out and enjoy handling. So if this applies to you, stay tuned because I'm going to discuss the top boa constrictors for people who want a boa to handle. And so when I put together this list, there were a number of criteria that I uh, took into account. And of course, the first is a non-aggressive animal because we don't want to get bitten and have the animal draw blood when we take it out to handle. Another consideration is that the animal doesn't squeeze too hard. And I know people like boas because they squeeze and, you know, the constrictor name is, you know, kind of part of who they are. But we don't want an animal that's going to cut off the circulation in our hand either. Basically, we just want one that's going to hold on gently and, you know, squeeze firmly, but not enough to cut off the circulation. So um, one comment is an animal not on this list, as you'll see, is a true red tail boa boa constrictor constrictor. And a lot of you guys might say, well, I have so many BCC that are very handleable. Why didn't you put it on the list? And I do too. I mean, some of my boa, my, my true red tails are great to take out and handle. Uh, others, not so much. They're somewhat aggressive. Um, in general, BCC are more nervous animals than the other types of boas and they're not uh, as easy to handle in the vast majority of situations. So I would say that if you're looking specifically for a boa to handle, you would want to avoid a true red tail boa. Another criteria is you have an animal that stays put. It doesn't try to escape when you take it out. And there are some locality boas, no matter how tame they are, they just move around an awful lot. They're not going to sit still like this guy. Uh, for example, the Pearl Island boa and the Corn Island boa, these two animals, even if they are not aggressive, they're going to try to get away. And typically that's not the best type of animal for taking out and enjoying a handling session. A fourth important criterion in a boa that's going to be handleable is that it's got even temperament. And what do I mean by this? Well, there are often boas which they'll seem uh, calm and not aggressive one minute, and then they suddenly have this mood swing and they start biting or hissing. And this isn't all that uncommon. What I've seen a lot with some of my boas is that when I take them outside to photograph them, they'll be acting perfectly docile one minute, and then I'll put them down to photograph them and they actually will go feral, as I put it. They just start acting really aggressive, like they're trying to escape and they're like a wild animal. They go from gentle to mental in you know, the blink of an eye. And I've seen my Pearl Highland boas do this an awful lot. They, they're perfectly behaved when I have them indoors, but I take them outside, they go feral, they start striking and hissing. Probably not what you want in a boa to handle. And the last criterion is that the animal interacts with the handler. It displays a sort of intelligence and maybe even a recognition of the keeper. And the animals on this list all are strong in one or more of these attributes. And in fact, all of these animals I'm going to discuss make really good pets. And so the first is this guy. This is a uh, Paraguana Peninsula boa from northwestern uh, Venezuela. This is actually an anorthristic variant that lacks the red pigment. And these are one of my all-time favorite boas. You guys have probably seen this one before. This is Anubis. It's, he's the official mascot of the Brian Boas YouTube channel. And you guys named him in a poll, Anubis, uh, not too long ago. And these guys are just a great boa. You can see how calm he is. He's holding on, not too tight. He's not trying to get away. Just a real pleasure to handle this guy. These guys are really interesting also from a biology perspective because if you look at a map of South America, they're right at the crossroads of where Boa Imperator to the north meets the range of Boa Constrictor Constrictor to the south and east, the true red tail boas. So these are kind of like a boundary boa, having a lot of the great characteristics of both Boa Imperator, the common boa, and Boa Constrictor Constrictor, the true red tail. And, um, these guys, unfortunately, they're relatively hard to find. There's not a lot of people working with them, so you don't see them too, co too often. But if you see these Paraguana Peninsula boas, these are a really great choice if you're looking for a nice, handleable boa. The second boa on my list of most handleable boas has a lot in common with the Paraguana Peninsula boa, both in terms of temperament and biology. And this is the Barranquilla Columbia 
boa. And so what this has in common with the first boa I showed you is that this is another boundary boa. These guys are from an area where the range of boa constrictor constrictor is really close to the range of boa imperator. It's right at the boundary between the two types of boas. And so you see a lot of the great characteristics of each type of boa. Boa constrictor constrictor, the true red tail, and boa imperator. And so looking at this guy, uh, this girl, I should say, there's just such a beautiful animal. They have this great high contrast with a lot of color, and they have this beautiful, a lot of them have this beautiful circle back pattern. And so, although they're technically not true red tails, I think anybody that, that you know, quipes about that is really should get a life. Since these are some of the most beautiful boas that I have, and I actually like these better than a lot of my true red tails. This is actually the last bo bo locality I added to my collection about a year and a half ago. Probably will be the last locality boa that I'll add to the collection. But these were bred by my good buddy, Michael Beach in Oregon. I was lucky enough to get this beautiful trio, two females and a male, and this is one of the females. And so not only are they beautiful to look at, but they're a joy to handle. They're really calm. They hold on, you know, gently but firmly. Um, just an amazing bow. They just have a really docile temperament. They never behave aggressively. Um, real great animal to work with. The husbandry is a lot simpler than with two red tails. So I, I can't say enough about these branchia boas. And even though I haven't had them all that long, they definitely have taken a top place on my list of favorite boas. Um, wish I'd gotten into them a little earlier. You know, my first boa actually as a teenager was a Colombian boa. You know, not specific to the branchial locality, but in general, this that animal looks similar to this female. Um, and that's this is what the Colombian boas used to look like before the advent of the morph craze and uh, people started crossing them all together and not really caring about the, the, you know, the genetic and geographic heritage. But this is about as good as it gets when it comes to a, you know, a Colombian boa, the Branchia Colombia uh, boa imperator. Next on my list of favorite boas to handle is the Tarahumara mountain boa. And this has been one of my favorite locality boas for quite some time. And a lot of people have seen Mexican boas before and they get this impression that they can be somewhat hissy and irascible. And a lot of the older books on boas make this claim. And they do hiss a little bit more than the average boa, like these guys as babies will be a little bit more hissy. But they actually almost never bite. They'll like do this bluff strike after they hiss and you can stick your hand in there, they don't even bite. So it's all a bluff. These animals are really, really not aggressive animals. Um, this is a four year old female. You can see she's still quite tiny. They only get to be about four feet long or so. So great animal for people looking for uh, an animal that doesn't get that big, but has all the great uh, boa constrictor behaviors. And so these animals, as I mentioned, they almost never bite. They're a very gentle, docile animal. They don't hold on very tight. And what I like about them is they're, they tend to be a little less active than some of the other boas. I mean, you can even take them out. I could put this animal down and I could leave the room. You know, I could put her down on a chair or something. I could leave the room and come back 10 minutes later. She'd still be in the same position. And I definitely would not advise you to do this, but if you're looking for an animal that's not gonna try to escape, it's just gonna hang out and chill, the Tarahumara mountain boa is for you. And so these animals have been, they've been in you know, captivity for quite a while. Um, unfortunately, the number of people breeding them, it seems like, has decreased. And I don't know of anybody who's bred them in the last couple of years. They've just been really hard to get. Uh, so I'm hoping to have a, a litter next year in 2022. I didn't have any in 2021. Uh, but a great boa for someone that wants to handle a boa and they want something that's not going to get very large and is going to be really quite manageable. You know, just as manageable as a ball python or corn snake. It's a Tarahumara mountain boa from northwest Mexico. The next really handleable boa on my list is another dwarf form. Just like the Tarahumara, this animal doesn't get bigger than about four, four and a half feet tops as an adult. And this is the crawl key boa from a small island off of the coast of Belize. And so these animals um, have a lot going for them. In addition to their small size, 
They have this really beautiful anorithmistic looking coloration, this really light ashy gray. Personality wise, they're another boa that's really docile and handleable and almost never bites. These animals, in contrast to the tar humara, they hold on a little bit more firmly, although certainly not the same extent as some of my true red tails. They're not going to cut off the circulation. Uh, their body, you can see that they look a little bit more muscular than the Tarhimara, so this isn't an animal that would just hang out if I put it down on the floor. But you can see they don't move around a whole lot. They just kind of calmly and inquisitively explore their surroundings. So really fun animal to handle. Um, I love the feel of the muscles of these guys. And what's great is that they're in this little tiny package. If one of the larger boas is too much commitment for you, this is great for someone that wants an animal that's not going to get any bigger than a ball python or a corn snake. And so this is another animal that is, can sometimes be hard to find. Um, so hopefully I will have so, another litter next year. My adult female, I gave the year off this year. Um, but hopefully in 2022, she'll produce another litter of these great dwarf crawl key boas. The fifth boa on my list of handleable boas has quite a dedicated cult following among locality boa enthusiasts, and that's the long tail boa, also known as the tombs boa or the longicauda boa. And so these animals, as you can see, one of their defining characteristics is this beautiful dark coloration. And what's quite noteworthy is the animals start off much lighter in color, and then they get a little bit darker with each shed until when they reach adulthood at four to five years, they got this beautiful dark coloration. Look at all this dark belly speckles and the beautiful dark head markings are what this form of boa is noteworthy for. And so they're also another animal that's really enjoyable to handle. So they typically are non-aggressive. They're a smaller boa, I wouldn't call them a dwarf, but you can see this is a young adult male. This guy is about five years old and he's maybe four and a half to five feet long. Typically they get to be about six feet or so for a large animal, but not a huge boa. Um, they are a little bit, This you can see this guy's moving around a bit. He's a little bit, and see my you know i was going to grab my female to show you guys but she's in shed right now my female is a little bit calmer but in general the longicata are an enjoyable form to handle and i don't think they'd give anybody a challenge to handle if someone was you know worried about having a boa that might be a little bit too much boa uh, for their handling capacities um, so i had a litter of these this year my first year breeding them and hopefully next year I'll have another litter, but just a great form of boa to get into if you're looking for something different that's enjoyable to handle and that isn't gonna get all that large, the uh, longicata boa or long tail boa. The sixth type of boa on my list of really handleable boas is not a specific type of boa, but rather a very large group of boas, and that's the morph boas. And so I'll say up front that not all morph boas are going to be really handleable, but there are a lot that are really handleable, and I think this has to do with the fact that many of these boa have been in captivity for like many generations at this point, so they can be rightfully thought of as domesticated animals, and their behaviors have changed substantially to the point where they're really handleable and in general very docile. And this isn't always the case. I have one morph boa in particular that's one of my most aggressive animals, but a lot of them are really chill like this. This is a female uh, Baran jungle boa. Beautiful looking animal, joy to handle. She's, I don't know if it's the video, she's a little bit more nervous right now than she usually is, to hold on a little bit tighter. Uh, but still a joy to handle this animal, love the beautiful colors on her. This is a four-year-old female who I believe is ready to breed and I'm planning to have her paired up in one of my first morph boa breedings in uh, 2021, later this year. So check out morph boas, a lot of them are really handleable and enjoyable if you're looking for a pet to interact with. The last boa on my list of the most handleable boas is one of the best when it comes to interacting with the handler, and that's the Bolivian boa or the short tail boa, boa constrictor amorali. And so this is a five-year-old male. This guy is from a bloodline known as the Orange Crush bloodline that was uh, founded by Joe Terry, and it's got these beautiful orangey purple coloration. 
Um, what's great about these animals is they seem to recognize their owners. Like they'll be waiting at the front of the cage when I come, uh, and they know that I'm. Or they seem to know that I'm going to open up and let them out. And they seem really interactive, almost like an intelligence. They seem like they're probably one of the smartest, if not the smartest, form of boa constrictor. Um, you can see that they're they're not too big. They hold on, but uh, not quite as tight as a true red tail. Uh, they're just a great boa and unfortunately like a lot of boas they're kind of hard to find but if you can find a short tail boa it's definitely a one of the best boas to get if you're looking for a boa to handle not aggressive you know enjoyable to handle as well as very interactive with the keeper and so that was my list of some of my favorite boas to handle these are animals i will typically get out if a non snake keeping a friend comes over and they want to see a snake or if you know some kids that are like uh, friends of my kids come over and they want to see a snake these are all great choices for kids and you know for non-snake people to look at and handle hope this was helpful as always shoot me any questions or comments you have thanks for watching and enjoy your boas